You are known as being one of the more successful trainers that's out there. Uh, quite well known. Why, thank trainers you. Trainers and coaches. I want to go back <laughs> to how you started. You, yes. you, you started brick and mortar like we did. Yep. And you did that for a long time. Take me back to, and you start, you, you did this in one of the hardest markets it was in tough. My, my opinion in the world in, in New York City. It was so take us back to that. When it you, was it was tough. I mean, so I went and worked for Equinox back in ninety nine. Spent a year there. Saw it get taken over by the first private private equity firm that bought it from the Erico family. So I think six months in, this firm came in and bought it from the Ericos for like one hundred fifty million bucks. So I actually saw Equinox go from a mom and pop organization wow. to corporate, which is one of the most valuable things I've ever witnessed in business. And I come from a catering background. My family, you know, bar mitzvahs, sweet 16s. I was sweeping floors at seven years old. It's like, I was always in that blue collar mentality. And I think that's why I love to work hard. Um, watching a GM walk into the room one day though, and look at all of the trainers and go, you're all expendable. It was the first words out of her mouth. And my jaw hit, <laughs> wow. I mean, my jaw hit the floor. It was probably one of the worst deliveries I've ever seen, but also one of the best messages I've ever received. <laughs> yeah. Not something you'd ever say to an, uh, an employee, especially 40 No, but I've done something raw, like that. <laughs> yeah. That's why, yeah. that's why, no, I yeah, that's why I'm laughing over here right now, because I'm like, I fired, I fired eight honesty. people on one day yeah. like that. You know what I'm well, saying? Yeah. yeah, but for different reasons, though. Yeah, yeah. Because we experienced something similar. We started with 24 Fitness, and we mm. saw them go from their heyday to getting purchased by these organizations the that knew nothing about fitness. Yeah. And, just got and uh, there was a common thread. This is interesting. They saw the trainers as not being valuable. Now, those of us who ran gyms, I ran gyms for a long time, knew that the trainers were like, that's the most valuable, some of the most valuable people in the gym by far. So they came in and they said that to the trainers. And what happened? Yeah, I, I, and, and I don't, and I don't, I don't get it. I, I still to this day, the trainers are your lifeline. They're yes, the people yeah. that are in front of your clients the most amount of time. They're the ones that have the most amount of touch points with the members. Like I don't understand how they keep devaluing them or paying them less, and it just makes mo no sense. A complete other conversation. Well, it's crazy. They, I mean, we had. Uh, I don't know if if you guys had these stats, but we. Had, I remember when I first saw these stats of a member who does not get a personal trainer the average fall off rate was within the first three to six months, that person stops coming to the gym mm. and they keep paying for about another seven months. That was, that, that was the stat. If they saw a personal trainer for just five sessions, that the average client would go for three plus years. Mm. That's huge. Big. You, know, you talk about, especially when you have some where you're monthly paying every single month. Like, so the fact that somebody would think that the, the trainers are something that you could just get rid of in a gym business is, you know what it, it was, no yeah. you know what it was, is that, uh, people who used in the model in the current big box model, people who use the gym a lot cost more money yep. because they use the equipment, they show up, they crowd the place. They're paying 20 bucks a month. Like the other guy who's paying 20 bucks a month who doesn't show up except for maybe once a month or never. And uh, they don't crowd the place. They prefer you not to show up. Yeah. That's that's the model. That's what happened. I, I get it, but I want people talking about their experience. Yes, I want them yes. happy. I want them walking into a party saying, and have everyone saying, oh my God, look at you. You look amazing. What are you, you doing? Results? Yeah, it, it's yeah. so, yeah. I mean, I, I, I think from a business standpoint, I get it, but I also don't. It's the one thing in fitness I just don't agree with. I think we got to put more love into the coaching. We got to take better. So what was the outcome? What happened after? Um, I like? started seeing that the trainers just started breaking off and they mm -hmm. started getting rid of a lot of us. Um, I was let go six months later. Our, our price points were too, too high on those coaches. They ended up actually hiring me back. I think a month later, I got a call. I think that GM was let go. And they hired me back. At that point, I was already making triple what I was making oh, at the wow. club. And I was like, oh my God, this is great. I control my own schedule. I was, you know, at a one-on-one -on -one facility. I went down to the Ritz Carlton Battery Park. I had a client of mine who built that one, that facility. And um, I went and I became the head trainer there, the only trainer there. At Ritz Carlton? Yeah, at a Ritz Carlton oh. down in uh, Battery Park, New York City. And I would pull my car up front. I'd hand in the doorman 20 bucks. He'd watch my car for four or five hours. I was charging, you know, at the time, 125 bucks an hour. Young kid. Well, bro, in. back in that, that time, that's a lot of money. It was for not. I think trainer. when I was 22 years All old, in. and I could talk, I don't mind talking about this, but I think I made, tw I think I made 200,000 bucks when I was 22 years old. Yeah. Wow. Like, I, I did wow. pretty well. But I was also, you know, like what you were talking about in your past life and business, I wasn't feeling fulfilled. There was this entrepreneurial yeah. piece that was missing. And at that time, there was no social media. There was like, there was no digital space. I mean, yeah. if we talk about what we're doing now here 20 years ago, people would be like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm running a podcast. I'm selling online programs. Yeah. Like I've got a global reach yeah. on the web. Like none of these terms really existed, which I think is interesting. But back then it was opening a gym. So I knew nothing about the gym space. 
but I did know people. So I went and I went to Angels and I raised I raised five million bucks at wow. twenty as a kid. Tw- no, at that point I was twenty five. You're a kid. Oh, you're still wow. a kid. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're a kid. I opened a young man. So then I started. So I didn't open my first club till two thousand five. So I think I was okay. We said back up. So okay, I mean, you obviously had to be. Okay, a couple things would come to mind right away for me. Yeah. Is that you had to have been a hell of a trainer. Yes. Because uh, I'm sure that- And you also from, have to be- Yeah, all cl- clients. Yeah, probably it. one of your superpowers is your ability to build relationships. Yeah. Yes, but they wanted it, They wanted me They wanted me to have my own thing. And you know- <laughs> yeah, hey, that's You have, really, that's yeah, really you have like someone in your, in your life that wants, that sees that you- not, I don't say the word deserve more, but you have more to offer. Mm-hmm. Then people start believing you and they start putting weight yeah. behind. Like, it's like what you guys, like yeah, yeah. 10 years ago, if I told you you'd be doing this now, you'd be like, what are you talking about? Like, yeah. this is this is the dream. I mean, it really is. What you guys have created is, is impressive. 20 million downloads, I think is the, the dream, but no one 10 years ago knew what this was about. So I raised the money and I start going in, and I'll never forget this is actually, I, I, to this, I'm, I'm embarrassed to even admit this because I've never said this once anywhere. But I remember going out with a broker, not dating, actually going out oh, yeah. to look at space and he was showing me different spots and he's like, well, what do you want from a square footage standpoint? And I was like, well, the more feet I have, the more square footage, the more equipment I can fit in, right? And he's like, uh, <laughs> so back then, like I literally, like I, I understood business, but I, I didn't know what I wanted yet. Yeah. So I ended up um, going to a term sheet with a broker in New York City, 1440 Broadway. It was Broadway. It was like, okay, this is great. And I ended up losing the term sheet seven months in. I think the guy was indicted and I lost... I think I probably lost a year and a half of my life when it came down to looking for the space, going to term sheet oh, for wow. seven months. And I stopped looking for locations. So I immediately started getting really smart. I was like, all right, I am never going to stop looking. Like even until it's signed on the dotted line, I don't care what deal, I don't care how much money's being thrown at me. I'm going to keep looking. I'm, I'm always going to pursue it. And um, I did that and I found 495 Broadway, which is a 15,000 square foot um, um, it, it started out as a golf fitness training facility. We had indoor simulators. I got a liquor license. Um, so it's a wine, beer, or the whole uh, thing? wine, beer, yeah. uh, hard alcohol. We weren't really supposed to have it, but we kind of did it. <laughs> Bro, the, the balls to get a fifteen thousand square foot place. Is I your don't know first... if it was balls or stupidity. <laughs> okay. I, I really don't know. I'm going to yeah. be honest. Like yeah. they probably go hand in hand. A hand in hand. No, I, I, I did think I was invincible. I was like, oh, I'm not going to lose, right? But <laughs> so we started. I'm not going to lie. We were printing money out of this place because we were doing corporate events. Upstairs for Goldman Sachs, Bear Stearns, Lehman Brothers. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know where I'm going with this. Yeah, so right. every, so like I'm getting on the phone with- the, Real with, good till 08. Yeah, 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 real good till 08, exactly. <laughs> you know where I'm going. So, I, I'm, so I'm sitting there, my brother and I, my brother was a, a professional golfer turned back amateur. We went through all TPI training. Went through, we were the first TPI level threes. Greg Rose, I don't know if you know who he is, mm-hmm. out of TPI. He was one of my mentors, but I, I went through their training 18, 19 years ago. So I wanted to take what TPI, the Titleist Performance Institute did, and I wanted to bring it to New York City, but I wanted to bring a little flair to it. I want to have entertaining. I wanted to start doing corporate events, bachelor parties, whatever it was. So we had the gym downstairs, which was doing well, but upstairs we'd have a corporate, uh, uh, you know, a corporation walk in and host a three hour event. You'd make cash. Now it's all guys. Now I'm going, well, there's no women here. What am I going to do? So I f- do a deal with Ford Modeling Agency. I'm like, I'm giving 60 year models or 50 year models all free memberships, but I need them here on this date. So then all, <laughs> so all the guys start brilliant. walking Hold in. Hold on, this is what is just so yeah, brilliant. Yeah, 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 it's, it's, it's so, but it's so stupid because I, <laughs> I, I I overdid it. Like, so all <laughs> all these guys from Goldman are walking in and I had like four rows of cardio and there must have been like 30 women, gorgeous on the elliptical. And everyone's yeah. like, and I'm sitting there like, oh, this is so obvious, man. This like, everyone's <laughs> going to know I'm a fraud here, but I was trying to fake it till I made it. So um, <laughs> we went and we did this for a while. And then 07, 08 hit. And I looked at my brother and I was like, holy shit, dude, like we got a serious problem here. I'm like, we got to redo our whole business. So um, we started. Um, huh. So wait, wait, back up. I want to know yeah. some numbers that, so yeah. At that time, like about what what is the gym doing? Where are most the yeah. is the revenue What's coming the from? On the place? So I think the time. so I think the re- so I started at low twenties a foot, uh-huh. and then with taxes, I could tell you my last year I was paying seven hundred fifty thousand in rent. 
I was paying fifteen thousand a month in real estate taxes. <sighs> Big nut. That's and then I had my and then I had my overhead. So in um I think when I signed my I, you know, I'm gonna get these numbers wrong. I thought I was paying like mid three hundreds for rent when I signed, but you had your typical escalations and your real estate taxes. Okay, so you got a pretty serious overhead. So the, yeah. is is most of the money coming from the monthly memberships or is the corporate things you're doing? Where's the revenue coming it's from? It's like probably a half and a half thing, 50, probably 50. a little heavier on the corporate events okay. side of it. Okay. Um which is why when that happened, you're like, oh shit. Yeah, we're like, oh shit. What's up, everybody? Uh, oh, you're going to love today's episode. One of the best trainers we've ever talked to, uh, we got to interview on this podcast. By the way, today's giveaway is MAPS Prime and Prime Pro, the mobility programs. So if you want to win those two, here's what you got to do. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Also, subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we will notify you in the comment section that you won, okay? We're not going to tell you to text us or call us. Beware of scammers. We will tell you in the comments that you won Maps Prime and Prime Pro. Also, we got a sale going on this month. Maps Anabolic and Maps Split, both 50% off, okay? Very popular programs. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the show. Probably the dumbest decision I made in my life was uh, we went PG on it. So we had a personal guarantee on it. Oh. So I couldn't throw the keys in. I, oh. had to, I had to ride out the life of the lease. <clears throat> so it was either, okay, hand the keys over, fine. You're going to be on the hook for, I think at the time it was like a $3 million probably oh, wow. hook. So they were going to wipe my brother and I out. So um, 0708 hits, corporate events go to complete shit. Right. Excuse my language. And um, we start bleeding about a hundred grand in cash a month. <sighs> So uh, my brother and I had the idea to turn around and go to some of our really good members who had a lot of money. I mean, this is like the cream of the crop. And I said, listen, we're in trouble. I'm not going to lie to you. You love this place. We love this place. I said, could you front load your year? So if John Smith, I'm making that name up, comes in and trained and spent a hundred thousand dollars last year, would you give us a hundred grand? We'll give you the membership. You're helping us out. Bro, he did like a, uh, like a 24 hour fitness flip. That's what they did. He yeah. did a flip right there. That's I exactly. pulled in a million bucks and I worked off a million dollars in training over the next few years. Me personally. Wow. You just worked uh, it off. I worked it off. Holy I was doing 40 shit. to 60 sessions a week. Holy shit, bro. I was waking up <laughs> at 3 30 AM to get into the club just before grinding. four. I, I've trained over 40,000 one hour sessions in my life. I figured the math on it and I did Damn, this for a while. Dude. So when people are like- It's four black belts. Yeah, well, <laughs> but when, when people like look at, like you guys had to go through, I'm sure there were moments yes. where you guys turned around and you were like, you know, I, I, am I, I doing the right thing here? Let me add something to this, Dom, <laughs> yeah, yeah. because uh, people who don't train people for a living don't understand uh, the, the difference between a regular 40 hour a week job and training people for 40 hours a week. <laughs> oh yeah. When you're at a normal job, 40 hours a week, you're really only on- you know, 20 mm -hmm. hours, maybe 25 hours. If you're training 40 sessions, you're on the <laughs> entire time. You can't Super relax training. or chill. You're oh, with no. the person in front of you and you got to perform and every prep. single time. It's, ex yeah. it's, it's, and, and it's exhausting. Prep. It's yes. like, you're not going, you never went and said, you know, oh, what are we doing today here? Yeah. Like, yeah. no, you're going. And, and the, I mean, part of being a great trainer is the being able to be a chameleon to each one of them. So yeah. you got, you take you know, on their energy. Yeah. Oh yeah. So each person you're changing almost like your character and personality, yeah. you know, eight, 10 times a day. That's exhausting. So then we, um, then Hugh Jackman walks into my club one day and you know, the story I told you guys earlier. Was he I, referred by somebody? Is that he was training with with a friend of mine and Hugh came over, started having a conversation with me, asked to work with me. And um, I was like, you're, you're working with my buddy. And then my buddy came to me. He's like, no, I'm having triplets. I'm leaving. I'll give him props. His name's Rico. Great guy. Great, great coach. And um, I ended up working with Hugh for the year. There's no social media at the time. I was- Was this some prepare to prepare yeah, for- Yeah, for Wolverine. Okay. So oh, I think it was Wolverine wow. in Australia, which the movie Australia yeah. with Nicole Because his physique went, went viral. Yeah. Yeah, it was sick. Movie. Yeah. It was sick. Um, he came off the boy from Oz. He was 175 pounds. People want to say he put on 30 pounds of muscle. There's no way he put on 30 pounds of muscle. Let's be very clear here. Uh -huh. He did not put on 30 pounds of muscle. I mean, he put on muscle, but he also put on fat with that muscle. And, you know, he got bigger and he got stronger. And But the, really the secret to our training was he had no lower body at the time. And I'm like, we, we got to build your legs. And he's like, but my upper body, I'm like, we got to build your legs. Like, so we taught him the squat. We taught him the deadlift, all the basic stuff. I really have more of like a power building back. I love power building. I love, I love the big lifts and I love doing mobility work. I love car. I love it all type of thing, but he needed lower body training. So we really focused a lot on that. We focused on his mobility and his body came and, and listen, we had food coming to him and I knew 
every hour he was eating, every hour he was sleeping. And we, we, we built him up now. Um, so you're responsible for that physique that was in the first He's your training, I should my, say. I, I was, I was, I always like to say I was a part of it. Listen, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Um, and again, I think it goes back to you're all expendable. Like I, I think that's why I've done well in this market is I understand that I'm expendable. And though I have some great relationship, like Ryan Reynolds just put a post up and tagged me on it. My boy for 14 years, he's like a brother to me. Like his, his wife, his wife's like a brother to me. We always joke around because mm. she's like, you know, <laughs> she's kind of like a dude. Right. And um, you wouldn't think that, but she's awesome. And um I think there's always been this respect that even though we're friends, I'm there for a job and I'm there to help get them to a certain point. And I think what happens in the industry is people start getting too comfortable and mm -hmm. they want to be in that world and they want to be next to that person and a part of it. And I'm like, don't forget what, why, why you're here and, mm -hmm. and, and, and what mm -hmm. you're doing. So when I um, started working with Hugh, no social media, it did not exist. And um, he, I remember him looking at me asking to do press, like, let's do some press. And I'm like, no. He's like, what are you talking about? I look back and I'm like, what was I doing? I was like, idiot. But he's like, uh, let's do some press. And I'm like, no. I'm like, we're getting oh you ready. Oh my God. Wow. Wanted, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, no, down. let's let's get you ready for this role. This is about you. This is not about me. I, I also mm. think it was that attitude that- He also was, probably loved that too. He loved yeah. that. And yeah. I think the next thing you know, I'm guys, further. every single week, I'm not even kidding. Like, hey, it's Michael J. Fox. Hey, it's Sandra Bullock. Dwayne Johnson's working out in the club. Like all these people were coming in because they realized that it was a safe place. Like yeah. I saw a woman oh, one see. time holding the phone low. And see I what went, a great what a, you know what what a great. I mean, we laugh or you you kind of joke. Actually, yeah, that I mean, was like, smart. Yeah, yeah. What, you that you know. Oh man, what a dummy! I didn't do the pro, but yeah. really though, no, it was long term smart. thinking. Yeah, yeah was first, I, I could have played it a little bit though. I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> sure, one article, no problem. But remember, we got to get back to it. <laughs> <laughs> I could have played it a little bit, but you know what? Listen, you're. I'm also a kid at the time. I'm. I'm I'll be 46 next month, so I've been in this business now 25 years i mean yeah. you you learn what to do and what not to do but, yeah yeah you know, so yeah. that so training him is what introduced all these other people to yeah. working with you mm -hmm. now what's it like working with somebody you know a lot of coaches and sure. trainers this is like a dream right for a trainer like oh my god if i could train celebrity then i could really get into it they got to do what i say they're getting ready for a role whatever is it different than working with an average person a regular person and if so how and what are the challenges i think how because i get the question i get asked a lot because i've worked with a lot of athletes also is mm -hmm. what's harder what's different i was like you know oh, what yeah. Athletes, we have a controlled schedule, right? Like we know when the games are. We don't know if they're breaking an arm during a game naturally, but my 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 actors, like Ryan does a lot of his own stunts. Like I've seen Ryan break his back. I've seen him break limbs and get concussions. And, you know, so they get they get hurt. What I the reason why I'm gonna say working with a lot of these actors becomes more of a challenge is cause there's no control over the schedule. Right. Like I'm working with Liev Schreiber, who's Ray Donovan, and he's got three days where he's shooting all day. And then Friday, Saturday and Sunday, he shoots overnight in Brooklyn. So suddenly that schedule is completely changed. Yeah. He's got two children. His wife, shoot, his, his, his ex at the time was was shooting a movie off in a in another location. And that to me gets really challenging when an actor of mine is is on a is on a a, a a set and a camera breaks down or one of the stars' mom passes away and everything gets put on hold and they're two time zones away from their family, it becomes a challenge. You know, when you have to remove these people from their environment with their kids and suddenly put them off in Dubai for six months, it becomes a challenge. And their lives are so volatile, like volatile. They don't know what they're shooting in six months. They don't they don't know the location yet. Like I'm training Ryan, I'm helping Ryan with Deadpool, do they have all the locations? They have some of them, but they also don't have a lot of them. So um, I think there's this level of uncertainty when you're working with a lot of these actors that at least with athletes or regular people, yeah, you have the majority of the time. What about their motivation, right? Like yeah. I would think, obviously, if you're an athlete, you're you're very motivated, especially a professional athlete, yep. you're very motivated and, and to increase your performance. Actors are probably passionate about their acting. So do you is, do you find yourself having to motivate them more to do the things you need them to do? Or are they equally motivated to come in? You know, I think, God, I mean, most of the time, I've been pretty lucky, I think, because when they're coming in, they understand this is part of their job yeah. and this is their level of being believable. And I think that's why a lot of the actors I've worked with, they don't want to walk around, you know, mm. all job. I'm like, you look great. Why don't you just stay that way? I'm like, well, I have to be believable and I have to be able to transition into a role. So mm. I have to come down from this. Like everyone, like the most Brad Pitt and Fight Club, Brad Pitt and Fight Club. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, enough. Like <laughs> yeah. enough, right? Like in, in the fitness world, like in your world, like you were, you were a pro at one yeah. point, right? It's yeah. like Brad Pitt and Fight Club wouldn't have placed on stage. <laughs> no, like it's no, nothing. Yeah, but yeah. in the, like- 
Hugh Jackman and Wolverine. He looked good. No, no offense. I love Hugh, but yeah. like in the bodybuilding world, right. like who the hell? Like, okay, yeah. fine. He deadlifts 450 pounds. Like everyone yeah. here can do that. Like, it's <laughs> yeah. other, right. But it, it, so I think some of them have this, you know, this switch where they're just like, I need this to be more believable for the role. Mm. Once in a while, you run into an actor who might be a little flaky and they're like, all right, well, what do I have to do? I'm not sure. And then you have to kind of hold their hand and kind of, mm -hmm. you know. Ever had to fire an actor? Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you don't have you to say their fire. name. But I yeah. wouldn't say fire. I would say separate myself. Yeah, yeah, okay. that's what I'll I just, mean. Just yeah. Yeah. I, the reason uh, why I asked that because that's a very that's a r reality of 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 training people. Period. I mean, yeah. especially yeah. when you get really good and you don't need every single client. There comes a point where you know you have to have your own boundaries that you set, and there's like your time is valuable, and so. You could be helping somebody else if you're not really truly helping this person. I, I, I had this conversation. I'm friends with uh, Jeff Cavalier, you know, the yeah, athletics yeah. guy. Yeah. So Jeff and I, would. he invited me on something with Gunnar Peterson last year. And I was, I called him up one day. I was like, Jesus. He's like, what? I'm like, man, I'm just having a tough time like saying no. Like I, I just, I got a call. He's like, by who? And I told him the name and he's like, oh, I can see how that's tough. I'm like, I can't do it. I can't drive 90 minutes to work with this guy. Spend an hour with him and his wife. Drive 90 minutes back. It's just not like, we're trying to evolve and we're trying to build something else. And there's another part of my life now that I'm really excited about. This is my past. So I got to hand these people off. Do you ever go through this? And he's like, Don, every day. Yeah. Hmm. He's like, every day I get reached. And he started dropping names of people who reach out online. He's like, I just, you don't have the time. At a certain point, you got to make business decisions and you got to say, all right, is, my, is this my ego answering questions or do I believe in a specific path that I'm taking and I have to, Right, you know, follow that path, and it's tough. I mean, you guys transition from coaches to building something that's great, and yeah. I'm sure sometimes you guys are put in the same situation. Yeah, yeah. it's time and energy. Are you? Uh, did you ever travel to um, like sets and locations? Sure. To, what's that like? A couple times. Um, okay. I didn't do it a lot because, you know, at 29, I had I'm sorry, 30 years old, which is 16 years ago now. Jesus, um, I had my daughter, so oh yeah, um, I, I think, and I was also running drive. And that was so for me to pick up at the time and travel with Scarlett Johansson over to, you know, wherever over overseas for three months, it's not happening. I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not going and doing that. Uh, but I would take short trips with people that I love, like Ryan, Blake, like those mm -hmm. are my people, Sebastian Stan. Like these are still a few people like Seb. Seb's doing my next month's challenge with me. We raised money for the Ronald McDonald house. I think we've given away in, in two hours of zoom calls. I think we donated like 50 grand, mm -hmm. something great to the Ronald That's McDonald cool. house. And we go to the house. So I'll do these celebrity challenges just to bring awareness to the person's favorite charity. And, and, uh, Seb, you know, I traveled to Atlanta for like, like two days and Ryan, I, Ryan, I was in Atlanta also. I met, I met the rock there. That's where I met Dwayne Johnson. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, he was incredibly friendly, but mm -hmm. um, it's funny. How, how is Ryan, is Ryan as cool and as fun, as funny as his personality is like the character? He he, he's, he's been um, him and his wife in business. In my career, they've probably been the single most important person oh, really? to <laughs> me. And I, I can't even begin to tell you how many things they do behind closed doors for charities and people. And they seem very, in terms, I mean, the context of celebrities, they seem like they're very grounded. Amazing. Okay. Uh, they, for them, it's about their family. It's about um, charities. It's about building business, building opportunity. For them, business is really about opportunity. Can they give more opportunity to people? And um, I, I'm telling you, in the 25 years I've been in business, I've never met any couple like them. They're, wow. they're, no, they're, cool. they're, they're amazing. Ryan is definitely more when in person, more business. Like he's, he's um to see what he's done with business Rexum and to see what he's done with mint mobile and to see what he's done with aviation gin in a short period of time. I mean, he's a, he's a marketing genius, but you know, behind every great man, you know, Ryan, mm -hmm. it's Blake and, and Ryan will be the first one to tell you Blake's, Blake's probably half, half the ideas and her, her, her mindset is, I can't tell you how many great, um, how many great ideas. Actually, one funny story I don't think I've ever met, even mentioned on, on air, but it was during COVID. They were, um, we were training a bunch, you know, through, um, through Zooms and um, Blake was like, I, I got this idea. You should do this funny skit. Everyone's doing these, um, all these reporters are doing in their underwear. They're like on the radio in the background, you see them in their underwear. You remember this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, all right, let's do something fun. So she's like, all right, listen, man, like you got to get some tanning stuff because you're pale as a ghost. So I'm like, what? So I'm like on Amazon or tanning stuff <laughs> during COVID, right? Which actually arrived shockingly. And um, we set up this whole skit and I film it. And out of nowhere, I look down at my phone, spent way too much time on this. She spent way too much time on this. We're just like probably bored out of our minds uh, trying to figure things out. I look at my phone, it says Ryan's name on it. And I, and I answer and he's FaceTime me. His face is this close. And he's like, listen, man, 
And I'm just looking at him. He goes, if I had someone years ago tell me not to do Green Lantern, and I trusted them, I would have listened. <laughs> Don't do this. And I'm like, bye, click. And I just deleted the video. <laughs> Don't do this. That's all I got out of his I love mouth. that he makes fun of himself for that movie all the time. It's so great. It's yeah. brilliant. Yeah. It's so brilliant. But that's that's them. Dude, yeah. I have to I have to ask. Yeah. I, um, yeah. So I had the experience of like training a professional athlete and kind of went through that process. It's just kind of a random thing that happened through network and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Um, but what I found was just like the crazy experience and snake oil type trainers that they had previous oh to me. God. And so I have to ask, like, in terms uh, of like that, that world, right? Like yeah, just you everybody wants best. to be a part of that world of like being able to have that opportunity and that chance. And then, uh, like, have you heard stories, at least from your clients, like of, of their past experience with somebody and oh just my God. what stories. kind of I've crazy seen it firsthand. I mean, yeah. it's terrible. I've seen it. I, 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 yeah, I tell launched, some stories. I launched an app company about 10 years ago with Adrian Peterson, Dwayne Wade and Ernie Els, and it was called driven app. So I started getting into that world early on and I'm not saying it was them. It was not them. It was other guys. But um, I saw one athlete, a very well-known NFL player that I sat with. And I said, how's your training? And he's like, it's, it's good. I said, well, tell me about it. He goes, well, I train six hours a day. I go, six hours a day. I was like, um, okay. So I'm just sitting there looking at him. And this guy is Pro Bowl, Pro Bowl. <clears throat> I said, well, what are you doing? He goes, well, I start my training. I start with MMA. I go into my MMA work. We go into the field. We do agility. We do our strength. And then I finish with power and then I go like, everything is just a whole, like, and I'm sitting there and I'm shocked. And I remember calling up my buddy, do you know, Charlie Weingroff? Have mm. you ever heard of him? Charlie's probably one of the most brilliant PTs I, I know on the planet. And he actually worked with me for 12 years and I called Charlie and I actually had like a bit of a meltdown. I was so blown away that this marquee athlete had such poor direction. Then I was like, well, six hours, you're stopping for lunch, right? Or like massage. He's like, no, we bring like a pure protein bar out and I'm like chomping on like everything that could have been wrong, went, went wrong. How's your body feeling? He's like, I'm getting pain down here. Now I'm stuck for some reason. My shoulders hurt me in here. And I'm like, all right, all right, all right. And then a couple months later, you saw this athlete go through some major hernia issues, mm -hmm. AC joint issues. Um, and you're sitting there like, holy shit, like what happened here? Well, now you obviously know what happened here, but that is more common than not. Yes. And I think it's because the players union can't, I don't get it. Like if I'm the owner, if I own the New York Yankees, sure, I'm going to bring in Eric Cressy. I'll bring in someone who's got a well-known name, who's going to establish a well-known board team, call it what you want of strength coaches. And I'm going to build it out there. You're investing $50 million, $30 million into a player, hundreds of millions of dollars into a player. You want to know that what they're doing in their off season is good. Yeah. And the fact that they can't put their fingerprint on for me makes no sense. I don't care what the argument is. I'm going in and I'm paying Mike Trout $400 million. Like, I want to make sure that he's not, yeah. he's a bad example. I want to make sure that he's not training with some goofball yeah. cousin who's just running him around. I don't know Mike's training. Let's just be very clear. I'm just using him as an, as yeah. an example, but I think we see a lot of that. And that to do me, the answer questions. Do you think it's more, they don't know that they don't know. That's why that's yeah. the only thing that makes yeah. sense to me because I think you're, I mean, those are, you're talking about very, people that own these, these, you know, NFL and uh, MLB teams. I mean, we're very brilliant, <laughs> uh, you know, successful entrepreneurs have built. A, I think they're very smart guys, but they know nothing probably. But about. they're starting to know because I'm good friends with Mike Boyle. He's yeah. one of my mentors. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when Boston hired yeah, Mike, I was sitting there like, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I hate Boston. I'm a New York guy. Right? <laughs> so let's be very clear. <laughs> but Boston, I'm, people say, well, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna attribute Boston winning a championships to Mike Boyle? I'm like, maybe. I don't know. Like, they seem to have been healthy. Yeah. They seem to be yeah. in yeah. a good place. Every time he Go pay one of the yeah. best strength coaches on the planet a million dollars a year, $2 million a year. I don't give a shit what it is. Bring them in and make sure that your team has got the proper training, but they're yeah. not doing that. Every player on each organization is training with a cousin or a brother. That's, I've met, I've totally. met more pro athletes. I will, off air, we'll have to just name drop with each other because I'm so curious if there's oh, that all story in. you I'll just saw. I'll throw them all the like, I wonder if it's the same person. <laughs> yeah, right? I, I can't I've say got it. a pro bowl for, I, we were all, I remember the first time this happened to me we're having sushi together uh this isn't uh all i'll say is a niner pro bowl guy super badass had some knee surgery and uh i saw the video i was actually having lunch also with his trainer and we're all hanging out and he's like you know one of his high school buddies who you know got his kines degree and like that's his that's it that's like his background he's like one year out 
and I see the stuff that he's doing and I'm going like, and you can't, I mean, I'm not going to offend the guy. I'm not going to say anything. So I'm just sitting back watching. I'm like, oh my God, dude, someone who's this valuable to the team that is right. this talented and you're getting trained this shitty, but it, that's what it is. It's always like some friend or a cousin or a brother who, you know, they got the credentials. And so it's just like, okay, I'm going to hire them. You know, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. No. I think it's what you said. They don't know. They don't know because you're dealing with such a high level, a high pedigree of athlete that uh, their capacity is so high that their body can deal with so much garbage and they're already performing at a high level anyway. So they probably have the attitude, well, it ain't broke, you know, so let's, it doesn't seem to be broken. But the problem is they don't know what they could be doing with proper training, you mm -hmm. know? And you get away, like I said, these the, the you know working out six hours a day, the average person would know right away this is too much. Someone at that level, it can get away with it for a while. And, sure. and what you can get away with is not what's optimal. I had a, a friend of mine, long drive guy, can't mention his name, but um, he had some of the highest numbers on. Now, long drive guys are, they're swinging the club, you know, 150 miles an hour. Like tour, like tour players, like Tiger swinging at like 122, 150 yeah. miles an hour. Wow. Their ball speed is up north of 220 miles an hour. Dustin Johnson, when they had him in that commercial, I think was at like 186. Wow. This is giving you some context on how, big a lot of these guys are and how juiced up some of them are also. It's, it's pretty funny. But I had one of them come to me that was like a farm boy, 6'6", six, six, ex-pitcher, went through his numbers with me and I was like, Jesus. I'm like, so what's your program? He goes, I don't work out. <laughs> so I'm looking at him like, oh, and he, and he turns to me, he goes, but I want to get on a program. And I'm like, I may not want to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't really got to fuck that like, up. I don't, want, I don't think I want to mess you up. You're like, it's just too good. Like I was, we were, Charlie and I were laughing about it. And yes, there is, there is something you can give him, but he went down South and he got on the wrong program and we just saw his numbers plummet. Mm. And just because he did stuff that strength coaches would be like, Oh, that, those are good things. Mm. But he started doing too much of it, mm -hmm. too much volume. You know, now you're feeding into the athlete or the actor who's like, no, man, I want to work. I want to push. Yeah. And I'm, I just text someone like, Oh, sometimes hundred percent is not going hundred percent. Mm. Sometimes, right. you, mm. sometimes you got to recognize that you're an athlete. And that more, 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 more is not the name of the game for you. Your golfers are tough because they're, they don't have an off season. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, most of these players that are trying to make it, I'm not talking about the Tigers. Yeah. I'm talking about the majority of the tour. They're playing 10 months a year. So when's their bulking phase? Like, oh, that's what are they a good gonna, point. You know, yeah. so, they, so they, they don't, so for me, those years of me trying to have so-and-so peak at the US Open, I threw that shit out. I, I mean, that's mm -hmm. done. I wouldn't even try and progress a program for a year because suddenly they're on a plane to Malaysia and they get food poisoning and they're puking for two weeks. And then, oh, guess what? They missed that. And mm -hmm. like, now what? Now, now they're in a bad mental spot because, oh, I ruined the program and I didn't do like, all right, let's step off the ledge here, right? And, that's really cool insight right there. So mm -hmm. share about what that transition looked like because we talk about people get questions and uh, we call that uh, call in and, and ask us about a sport and kind of how yeah. we would lead up to peak or like that. Yeah. But that's such a great point. A lot of these professional athletes, there is no real off season. They are playing at such a high level so much. A, a lot of them are. So yeah. how has, how has that changed the way you look at the programming when you, when you go to write something? For I them? always set up, a, I always have a template, right? I have a program, but I explain to them that they have to deviate off of it. And there were years where I was using, have you heard of Omega wave? Mm -hmm. Omega wave is, it's really probably the best way on the planet to measure readiness, but mm -hmm. it's not like through my aura ring who I've been working for where it gives you your readiness, but you know, it's, I, I pay more attention to it for its sleep. Mm -hmm. Omega wave is you're laying down for three minutes mm -hmm. and they're putting a head sensor, a wrist sensor, a chest strap on. You got to be in a dark room and it's basically Omega wave has, has figured out this algorithm that's going to let you know where your readiness needs to is for the day where your CNS is for the day. And then it can assign to you, where does your training need to be? If you're a golfer and your readiness is here, well, you, maybe you shouldn't be working on driver today because that's more power. Maybe we need to work more on short game and putting. So now you're able to actually really determine the, where the practice needs is to be. Is that what Kelly that. Starrett was using? Oh, I, I know oh, Kelly well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Kelly. Remember he was joking about how he would have his, he would go and he needed to lay down right after he woke up. Has to be a mega wave. Has and, to be. and his kids yeah. would come disruptive. And, and be like, suddenly you're like, oh yes, my God, you can't talk, talk to me. You can't talk to me. He made me a joke. All over again, yeah. yeah I just yeah, spoke with Kelly. I just spoke with right. Kelly out in, in, in Munich. I met him for the first time. He's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Like, we, they were just here. Him and his wife. We had yeah, a great yeah. conversation, great and he was sharing a story. I don't remember what yeah, yeah. That tool he was using, yeah. but he made the point of like he had to get all hooked up and lay still for a certain amount of time. So I made the mistake years ago giving it to one of my tour players, and we started measuring their readiness. Now years ago, 
what happens on a Thursday when they're waking up to play and they wake up and they look and they're in the red? Yeah, freak out. Oh, mess yeah, with yeah. their mental Come game. on, man. Like, so th these things can become weapons. Like when you look mm -hmm. at Whoop, when you look at <laughs> Aura Ring, when you look at some of these other devices, and I work for Aura and I love them, but I use Aura for sleep. I use Aura for trends. I use Aura to be able to determine my behavioral change. How do I need to adjust things? And it's data. It's just- if What a good point because uh, a huge part of performance is your physiology, but you cannot separate that from your mental state and, your, and how you believe you're going to do. And I mean, this is why athletes are so superstitious yeah. is- because uh, you know, uh, you know, wearing the same socks or doing the same routine before the game helps me perform better. Well, he believes it or she believes it does. Then it does. Well, how do you separate the two? In spite of how you feel a lot of times. Right. Yeah, I would so. never let the. I would never give it to the the, the I, athlete. I would only be able to read it, and then I'd lie to him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, bro, you, you got a hundred exactly. score today. This is perfect timing. Hundred percent, yeah, shield it from hundred percent. That's what yeah. we end up doing. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. Yes. I'm all with Morgan Hoffman, who's 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 my boy, who's on the tour, and he's yeah. like, "How about your dude?" You're go good. Out. Dude, go shoot 60. Yeah, you're like, good. That would be my line. I wouldn't tell him he's great. I'd be like, dude, you're in a great place. Go shoot 60. Yeah. That's all I would say. <laughs> you know, fires off an 80s. Like, what the hell happened? Yeah. Well, <laughs> don't worry about it, man. Come on, we'll bounce back tomorrow. It's all about coaching at that point. It's it's all about this, yeah, right? Yeah. It really is. Yeah, it's yeah. it's I, my whole thing with athletes is, and I would use golf as an example because I think it's a great example. I don't care if the golfer hits the ball 320 yards or 325 yards. I don't see the, I, I honestly, I don't know. I don't, the juice ain't worth the squeeze. It's not going to, I want them to just become resilient. Mm. Like my thing with athletes is I want them to wake up every day with energy and resiliency and being able to wake up feeling in the best possible place. That's mm -hmm. my goal with every consistency athlete. Yeah, that's it. across the board. When yeah. you work with celebrities, are you working alongside? Cause I imagine somebody signs up for a role. They're going to have a trainer. They're going to have a nutritionist. They're going to have maybe a doctor that's going to optimize their hormones or use peptides. They're going to have, a, are you working together with a team? It depends. Um, yeah. Some yes and some no. And it, it depends on the individual. I okay. think it really is. What? How do they want to approach it? Some of them, it's like, what are we training for? Mm. Right? It's, it's, you know, I was talking to someone last night that I'm helping out and he's preparing for a really big role. And I'm like, listen, man, you don't have to look like Pat Bateman in American Psycho, right? Like that's not what you're, you're playing a doctor. Like you're actually right there. I just need you going in this role in a good frame mm. of mind, feeling healthy, you know, we don't need to go so overboard because then it also gets to a point where it's like, it's not believable. Like I've worked with actors where we've had to fatten them up. Oh, you wow. know, Liev Schreiber for um, oh, uh, that Chuck. That must be interesting. Yeah. Chuck, you remember, you remember the Chuck Wepner story? It was, uh, oh, it was okay. the whole Rocky story. Yeah, yeah. Before that's, what, Rocky. that's what inspired Rocky. He played that? Yeah. Oh my God. I yeah. Mean, I so he came in and I'm looking at him and I'm like, you don't look like Chuck Webber. <laughs> we got to stop training. <laughs> we didn't stop training, but I was literally like, dude, go out. Like, you like those little burgers at the Royalton? He's like, yeah. He's like, yeah. go, go have them. <laughs> go, go, go enjoy it. Yeah. Want to put a vodka back? Enjoy vodka. That's back. the most uh, most radical transformation you've seen with one of your one of the people you were, or celebrities, I guess. You Probably you would be one. It has to be one. Hugh Jackman. Yeah, he one. would be one. I mean- What's been cool about Ryan is you you see his body over yeah. time getting better. Blake Blake Lively, sorry, mm. Blake Lively when she she delivered and then she literally months later shot uh, the shallows in a swimsuit. She looked like mm. she she looked like a victim. Are they are they fitness fanatics anyway? No, or? okay, no. Uh, uh, Blake 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 is it? Uh, Blake is like. Um, Blake's Blake's not. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. But she, but she. That gets makes in, it more enjoyable well, though yeah. when they're really not, yeah. and you actually get to but show. She, but she, so, but she talks about. It. She's yeah. like, no, I struggle with this, and she she put up a post of me and her years ago. I was like, hey, I got my body back. It only took me, I think she said, like seventeen months. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's just like, and then I'm sitting there like putting a little smirk on the thing. I don't care. Like I, I'm not. I'm, I don't sell quick fixes. I don't sell twenty day detoxes. Right. I sell long term approaches. I want to change someone's lifestyle. I believe in metabolic flexibility. Yeah. I believe in carbs and fats as energy. Yeah. I believe in calories as energy. You use FMS as a screening in the beginning. Uh, yeah. This is something I yeah. appreciated listening yeah. to some of your other interviews is just the approach, even with like actors, because you think they're just in it for the hustle of getting ready for that one thing for the most, most of the time. How hard is that for you to sell to them that, you know, here's, it, this is a lifestyle thing and I'm going to try and fix your movement as well as uh, get you looking good. I actually had an individual walk out of me once because I don't, I don't know about performance enhancing substance 
substances. I, guys, I don't know. It's just- Yeah, you're I, lifetime natural, yeah? I'm lifetime natural. Yeah. It, it's, it doesn't make me any, I, I gotta go on right. It does not make me any better than anyone. I just have not had a need for it. Mm -hmm. It's, I'm not training for a stage. I'm not training for a powerlifting meet. I'm not training for something that that I need that to be able to perform. Um, I also understand that there are doctors out there that are really smart at this stuff. And if you have questions about it, go to them for it. So I've had no need for me to even educate myself on it. If someone asks me a question, I'll say, you know, go to Dr. So-and-so or, or this doctor. And, and that's the mm. person you should be talking to. But I just, it's not my wheelhouse. I believe in surrounding myself with a team of people and, you know, allowing everyone to handle their facet of, of the, of the project. Integrity. Are the mm -hmm. performance enhancing substances as prevalent in the celebrity world as they are in the, in the professional sporting world? Um, Oh God, I don't even know how to answer this. I, I just, I'm not around it. I mean, mm. I, I know of actors that are taking it. I just, you just handle the training. I just handled yeah. the training yeah. and, and I, but I, I have had actors that I've worked with come up to me and they go, what do you think of this? And I said, well, for what you're trying to create, I don't know why you need it. Right. And I try and talk, I had a really bad experience with my best friend and my head trainer. I found dead in his room oh, back wow. in 2010. Whoa. He got, and he, he got addicted to testosterone and he wasn't getting it from a doctor. And I saw him, I met him when I was 21. And um, I think- so that was probably around 2000. So by 2010, um, I came home from Vegas. I was with my uh, visiting my in-laws in Vegas and I landed and I went to drive and he wasn't there. It was like 6.30 in the morning. I was, Tommy has a session at 6.15, where is he? So like, he didn't come in. German guy, no family. I had to co-sign his cell phone, his lease. He had no one. Like it was, it was us. Like we were his family, and I, I freaked out. And oh we ran God. up to his room. We ran up to Twenty Third Street between Sixth and Seventh, and we had to get let someone. The cops came. I called. I knew something was wrong, and uh, you know, I, I made the phone call. By the time I got up there, the ambulance was there. Already. Holy cow! So, um, and then when heart failure, heart failure. He had mat. He had triple bypass surgery at thirty seven. He was coming in to work white as a ghost. I mean, he would be. You know, he'd be up with a woman all night, like trying to, you know, mm. do his thing and wouldn't be able to finish up three hours. He was such a lunatic. He would take a break 90 minutes in to go drink a protein shake. He'd be leaving the woman laying on the, oh, on the wow. like he was just, he was mental when it came to this stuff. But his testosterone, um, I had to go uh, claim rights to his body. So um, that was a two week process where I had to go down to city hall because it, it, what happens is if, 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 if you die and you have no one claim the rights to your body and you're not getting a proper burial, they put you in something called plotter's field, which is for like the no names type of thing. Oh, wow. So um, he knew something was up a year prior. He's like, dude, if something happens to me, you got to handle this. And we were, I was like, nothing's going to happen. We're going to get you. And I hooked him with some doctors and we couldn't, we couldn't help him out. So um, two weeks, I had to go identify his body two weeks later, which is the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my oh. life. If you have to identify someone two weeks after they That's die, terrible. I would never Ugh. talk to anyone about it. The only way I was able to identify him was by them showing me his teeth because I couldn't tell he was all green. And then we, and then we gave him a proper burial and um, his testosterone when he died was north of 3000. Oh, okay. So he was just cranking it he the was, whole he time. Was done. I was a natty at the time because we got tested months earlier and um, I was at like 700. Mm you know, like a, I yeah, think a normal, healthy, normal, healthy range, but wow. just watching him go through that process. So when people ask me about it, I'm not quick to say, Oh, don't do that. You don't need it. I'm quick to say, well, you know, maybe there's some lifestyle changes you need to make. Maybe it's the three hour sleep or the drinking six nights a week. Yes. That's costing your tea to drop. And you guys know this stuff, yeah, oh yeah. but I just want people to think about it. And I also want them to think about is at a young age, if you do it at 20 years old, what's going to happen when you're 30? Is it going to be exposing something in your body? Or is there something that's going to, you know, is there cancer? Is there something going on? Depending on what you're what you're taking, I'm causing. I'm, I'm very broad right now, but I think you guys get where I'm at. Yeah. No, no, I think that's how we present it to people, especially if you're that young. If you're that young and you have low testosterone, you must check all the other boxes first. Hundred percent. You have to check the sleep, check the diet, check the stress. Yeah, huge, check all huge. It'll impact the huge. Yeah. But do sure. I believe there are great doctors out there, yeah. and there are individuals that oh, need yeah. it, and. You know, you're hearing all this. I mean, peptides aren't, uh, they're, they're very different. I'm really curious about the whole peptide thing now, yeah, like that yeah. I'm trying to get educated on. Yeah, we're all going down the rabbit hole right now. Yeah, it's like, okay, well, what is this? Like, like yeah. okay, are there any, yeah. I had a buddy of mine, um, one of the guys I trained with who started taking them and he just started getting a massive amount of cramping when we would be training. Mm -hmm. oh. He'd be sitting there, nowhere his pec would spaz out on him and he'd have to stop training and all this stuff. So like, I don't know, 
but I'm hearing incredible stuff from it. You still want to work with a doctor. You, you, unfortunately, you can buy them online as research chemicals. And that's what oh, people really? are doing. Yeah. Yeah. Is that what they're doing? <laughs> it's, so, it's so crazy. Oh, my God. You still want to work with a doctor. I had a professional athlete walk in once and start asking me questions. One of the most well-known baseball players in the world. That's all I can say. Oh, wow. And um, I just said, listen, man, I, I don't know what to tell you. I just don't. It's not my wheelhouse. And mm -hmm. he walked out. I never heard from him again. Yeah, if people only knew that what they could accomplish without the use of any of that stuff um, and uh, how big of an impact it actually makes. I think people may, you know, I used to think that the difference between uh, you know, a pro and everybody else was that, but it's not. It's not that. It's the work. It's the genetics. It's the consistency. Oh my God. That's like 5%. The 95% oh is everything else. We're not looking like Chris Bumstead if we all get on what Chris Bum gets on. Like <laughs> yeah. it's just, no. Ronnie it's, Coleman natural was a top 10 Mr. Olympia yeah. before he became Mr. Olympia when he finally went on gear. And the greatest Olympia of all time. Yeah. 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 Okay. 100%. Yes. Mic yeah, drop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. So how did you make the, then how did you make the leap from doing this to that to now going digital and yep. building your business? In, so, in, in uh, other ways. 2020 rolls around. Um, I'm trying to renegotiate my lease with my landlord. Uh, I cut him a check um, in, I want to say March or April. <laughs> so, gyms were forced to close March 16th. Monday, Whoa, March wait a second. Before we get to the digital thing, yeah. I want to know how you how you handled the 08 crash and how you had to kind of like- Oh, good question. Well, okay. So, great. Um, so, yeah, take um, me from there. I had that to was a big there. deal. So, I had to burn that down. So, we burned that money down. We restructured our business. Now, we started becoming more of the superhero- you know, body transformation, body comp, which is a way bigger market than golf. So I think if anything, it was a huge blessing because my brother and I, we knew what we knew. We really got into strength and conditioning and we were trying to be like the smartest guys in the room at the time with, you know, kinematic sequencing and 3D mm -hmm. swing analysis mm -hmm. and doing all this stuff. But there was a small market for that. So I actually think it was, trust me, it was a tough few years for me. And, but uh, I think it ended up being a blessing because then it opened the door to something that became very global. Uh, but it took us a few years to climb out of that. And it was, it was tough, man. We were, we were um, actually, um, oh God, man, I remember Hurricane Sandy hit. So what, what, what year was that? Was it, <gasps> Doug, four, uh, Hurricane Sandy was what? 12, 13? Yeah. Maybe. This is how long after we went through. I remember even going wow. through 12. All right. So I remember in 12. So that's four years after. Yeah. I remember Hurricane Sandy wiping out our building that I owned a unit in downtown, a beautiful two bedroom. And I remember selling our apartment and I remember my wife and I moving into a little, like small little guest house behind my parents' house rent free for a couple of years. I remember living off that money and not collecting salary because we were just at the end of build up, uh, uh, pulling out of that. Oh wow! So there was this, th listen, man, I, and that's why now even listening to coaches, like guys, come on, man! Like I've been doing this for six months. When yeah, are we I, make get it? on the floor, <laughs> yeah. train, clean up weights. Yeah, I don't care. Like get uncomfortable. Yeah. Take internship programs. Get your train ten thousand hours for free. Yeah. Stop worrying about what he's charging or he's charging or he's charging. Get yourself out there. I don't care if you take less money. I, I turned to a coach once who was charging six hundred an hour, and he was like, <laughs> "I charge six hundred an hour." I go, "How many clients do you have?" And he was like, "I." I Three or four. Yeah. I'm like, great. Why don't you do this? Why don't you charge 200 an hour yeah. and train triple the amount of people? Well, why would I do that and work more? I said, because working more is going to give more opportunity. Yep. It's going to put you in front of more people. And get there's you more things. Right. Yep. So stop thinking, stop trying to think like this entrepreneur, like, like work less, make more money. Like yeah. it's horseshit. Yeah. Even now with my programs, I run challenge communities because I want to be in front of people mm -hmm. and I enjoy being in front of people. And I want those 10,000 people who are part of my community to become 20,000. I want to put myself in front of these people more and more. So I got through 012, I got through 12 and now we're starting to run a real business. Okay. Yeah. Now I'm going to renegotiate my lease. And I can't remember, I even believe I remember these dates. It was December of 19. I went to my landlord and he just wrote back to me, rejected. I was on, on an offer. I gave him a nice offer. I was in that space 15 years and he wrote rejected. I said, okay, fine. Then we start hearing about this COVID thing. What COVID? What the hell is COVID? We're like, oh, no, it's, it's nothing, right? And then it becomes real. March 16th, Cuomo said all gyms are closed. I sat up all, my wife and I ran in the living room like a, like a tornado was coming into the house. Like we were literally ripping rugs off and, and pulling couches out. And we shot a four week body weight program dude it's hilarious i had like sleeve like a like a like a, a self-cut sleeveless shirt my hair was like out to here at the time <laughs> and i'm literally i built this four-week program we shoot all we sit up all night we shot like 50 videos i wrote the program we put it on a template the next day i start getting a call from every publication would you give an ab workout would you give a bicep workout i'm like i'll do better how about if i give you a free four-week program 
Mm-hmm. For all of your viewers. Yeah. Wow. And wow. they were like, really? Where do you have to, what do you have to do? Just send them to my site to get it. So I collected 200,000 emails in four weeks. <laughs> wow. So that's when I turned around and I was like, all right, we might be onto something here. The next month I offer a free challenge. What does that mean? All 200,000 people that we now have emails to, I want you guys to join us for another month and I'm going to coach you now. And I think I did it for free. So then I started converting people that every month, the number just kept doubling, tripling. It was like, oh my God, by the time I roll around. So I kept, I got PPP money. I paid off my landlord $180,000, done. Great. Have to leave the equipment in there in September because we can't legally get trucks in there and move it out. And the entire time I'm like, man, I don't want to do this. I'm like, I'm a, I, I literally, I, my whole life revolved, like my level of significance revolved around these clubs that I had. I had another club too uh, that I ended up selling. But all my significance I felt like was in this club and I don't want to go back. Like, this is what I want to be doing. So I sat with the landlord to renegotiate on different terms. And I said, listen, we're going to have to do something on net profit. He didn't want to do it. And we moved on from there. And um, Dino Brands was launched. But I, I was proud to say that with PPP money, I left the trainers on for probably at least six months. And I had them trying to do some work digitally. I left my manager on for a year. I was able to pay her for a year. She was with me for 12 years. My head cleaning guy, I, I found two jobs for in November. Like we really wanted to make, my whole priority was to make sure everyone was set up and they're all mm-hmm. doing great now. And ironically, like I have great relationships, even with my, with my coaches today, I'm sending them clients because I'm not taking clients anymore. So yeah. they, they love me because I'm calling them up every week. Like, hey, I've got someone for you prepping for this movie. They're like, oh my God, thank you. And they, <laughs> <laughs> but they all they all hung with me and they did right by me, so I'm going to make sure that I do right by them. So. Uh, that's wow. really cool. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's funny because uh, someone like you who doesn't know this or, or, or people who don't know your story maybe like, oh he came out of nowhere. Look at this, he did this real fast. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, man, it's a 25. Buddy year might, yeah, a buddy might said, man, you're a 20 year overnight success, and I said exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's it's 25 years, and and listen, I mean, I had to go through what I went through. You guys had to go through what you went through, right? Like we have to, and we can't erase that. Nor do I want to erase that. But even looking back on the moments of, you know, driven apps going to complete crap. And I mean, we, when I say we were printing money, I, I mean, we were number one in the app store at the time when like apps were becoming big. So we did the MTV of cribs around apps and these athletes. Oh, wow. So we were literally every day we're like, oh my God, oh my God. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> and then the example I gave us like when you're at the top of that roller coaster and you start like, ah, like <laughs> riding something down that hard is something that I hope most people don't have to do. How, how, tell me about yeah. the fall off. How fast was it? And like, how dramatic was oh, it? Dude, it was epic, man. Really? Oh my God. It was like crashing and burning. I mean, it's like when you hear these Wall Street stories of like businesses one day being gone, it was like, we were selling this company now for pennies on the dollar. Wow. And it was wow. like, oh my God, all that work, all that money that we raised. I raised a million three in like five days for this project. It was so easy to raise money. And then it was gone. But um, the reason why that company did not um, did not continue to grow was one word, and it was called engagement. And it was at a time where you're dealing with these agents that they want their 10%, their attorneys want their 5%, mm-hmm. they want guaranteed money. Anytime I even, I even talk to cele- I have celeb clients of mine call me up about deal structures. Anytime someone is, is, is trying to put like, oh, well, how many posts are they going to do a month? Like, just, just forget it. Like it's mm-hmm. not like Ryan, Ryan Reynolds is not sitting there buying a company, like saying, oh, I'm going to do this amount of posts a month. Like he's part, he's an owner. Yeah. He's building that company. He's on the phone he's with invested. truck drivers yeah. mm-hmm. to get deliveries done. Like that's what he did with aviation. Like that's like, imagine getting a phone call. Like, Hey, it's Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. I'm like, click. like, you know what I'm saying? So, but to, but to understand how many celebrity deals go South because their agents are sitting there going, well, they only want to do one post a month. It's done. Don't even mm. bother. I've had brands call me. How do you think they only want to do this? I'm like, they're not your person. You need someone who's going to get involved and they're going to engage. They're going to sit there not asking, well, I have hit my requirement. How can I over yeah. deliver my requirement? How can I be there more? And, and that's, why that company did not um, continue to grow? Yeah, wow. being as, so so you're, you now you're crushing the social media yep. digital space, and you're seeing all these people starting businesses in the in the social media digital yep. space. And in my opinion, because we all started brick and mortar like you did, yep. In my opinion, there's a lot of misconceptions that that somehow the old rules don't apply anymore. Um, like for example, you know, we've talked to coaches and trainers who are like I only have. You know, I only have three thousand followers, and I'm like, you know, if I when I owned a gym, if I had you put three thousand people in front of me, 
that was incredible. That was amazing. You live off that. So their yeah, their their mentality is a little different. So talk about how it's it's all the same. And I you wish still I knew grind the presentation. A friend of mine just put a presentation up, and they showed three thousand, ten thousand, twenty thousand people packed into a stadium, and what it looked like. Mm -hmm. You're like, that's a lot of people. Um, I I I understand the importance of social media. It's been amazing for all of us, but I also think uh, I call it vanity metrics. Sometimes it helps, but I really believe that the email list far surpasses the social media. Oh, it took us a while to figure Sal, that out. Yeah, I mean, Sal had the biggest that. following out of all of us on social media. And has been, well, I mean, just recently back on, but it's been off of off. it for, oh, <laughs> for damage. Congratulations. Yeah, thank yeah. you very much. I wear as a badge of honor. Oh, you know, for almost, I don't know, 10 months or whatever it was. And the business never slowed down its growth. It never, like, it's 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 a nice to have. It complements everything else we're going, but it's and not. But figuring out this whole algorithm thing, like, I'm, like my, I, I want to put up content that people value and they enjoy. Right. I, I can't, I put up stuff that is phenomenal and I'm like, oh, wow, that was a really good piece of information. And it gets 300 likes on yeah. it. You know, yeah. I've got almost whatever my following is yeah. 300 something thousand. Yeah. I put stuff on that's complete crap. A buddy of mine, uh, Frank Seppi. Um, yeah. You know, Frank's a yeah. very good friend of mine. We, we train a lot. One of the most photographed fitness models of the oh, last Oh, man. Year. I used to follow that guy back in the late 90s, early 2000s all the time. So if you guys are ever out in New York, I want you to come by the barn and train with us. Okay. You'll have a blast. Yeah. We'll feed you. You guys will love it. You, uh, if you saw a picture, you know who he is. Oh, he's I, guarantee you see, I guarantee you've seen him on Muscle and Fitness Flex. The whole he's deal. a monster. Him and I, one of our best performing posts was we got dressed up in like a Cobra Kai, like tight outfit, <laughs> and we worked out together into some stupid music. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> Really? Like this is <laughs> where we're at viral. now. Like this is what this is what my life's <laughs> That's the become. Standard right but there. you also got to understand that, like, am I am I chasing that or am I trying to build a business? So that's, that's him right there. So I'm oh, sure yeah. you've seen oh, yeah. him before. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's yeah, all over the place. Oh, see, see the the right. He's in my gym. He's doing flies. Wearing oh, okay. my elbow sleeve in, yeah, in my gym. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> oh, there you go. Um, but he's but he gets the joke. I mean, he understands that he he doesn't like take himself too seriously, which is what I love. But Frank's 51. Is he That's really? 51. Holy yeah. cow. He looks amazing. Yeah, yeah, he does look. He looks phenomenal. He looks phenomenal. Good, good he, health. He looks healthy too. Because he was fun. a pro bodybuilder back in the day. He was 315 pounds. Big guy. And he'll even talk about, like there was a time where he went natural. Like he was on a lot of stuff and he said he almost like died at a show. Oh, and wow. he finally turned around. And he's like, I'm not doing this. Like I'm going to, he's one of the few guys that I saw transition from being like, he won the Mets. He won, I think the Easterns or something. I mean, he won a few big shows. And he's one of the few guys that actually transitioned. Yeah, it's funny. And um, I mean, look what he looks like. I mean, he's healthy. He's in yeah. shape. I mean, he's he's you know he's a he's a he's a happy dude. Yeah. He's he's funny. By that's the way, that's incredible. Yeah, I, you know, back to the social media. Yeah. You know, it, the other part of it is you. They have. It's like you think you own your business, but you don't. Mm. They do. I mean, I got booted mm. off Instagram, and it wasn't anything Why? crazy. Oh well, God. You know, <laughs> oh, should we not talk about <laughs> it? explosive <laughs> memes? Uh, no, you know, weird. no. It's. Uh, I mean, I'll talk about it. I mean, during the whole, uh, you know, the 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 last election, I would put up some political commentary. Nothing really crazy or anything, but right. obviously, some people at Instagram didn't like some of the stuff I had to say. So I started getting throttled. I started getting restricted. Then next thing you know, they went through stories. You know how stories disappear after 24 hours? Yeah. I was getting notifications for stories that I had posted two years before. Warnings. You can't do this. I'm like, this is two years ago. It's not even up anymore. So I knew they were coming after me and then they kicked me off. But if that was my whole business, it would have been over, right? Instagram right. would kick me. I would have been done. I had a friend who her, their business revolved around Facebook ads and his business went from a few million dollars a year to they changed the algorithm to seventy five thousand dollars. Yeah, a year. no, it's it's overnight. So I tell people like this all the time: like social media is great, but you you build it all around that. That's not your business. Whereas email lists, you have way more control. Way more control. I mean, but I still believe that you need to focus on relationships. Like yeah, when, like in, in the beginning on social media, I, I took one woman who was almost nine hundred pounds. It was one of my biggest success stories ever, and I'm still nine hundred pounds. Yeah, eight seventy two. Oh, what? she was wow. weight on a meat scale, wow. and uh, how do you? train somebody like that. Uh, you God. teach them how to walk again. Yeah. Wow. That's the training. You teach them how to walk again and then you start focusing on nutrition. That's that's it. I mean, she couldn't walk. So um she just broke 400 pounds recently. Wow. Wow. Seven years. Oh, she dropped to 360. Amazing. She had a setback. Went back up to 430. Mm -hmm. we, we we got her back down. And it's 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 a battle. I have a guy I worked with in um since May it was 525. He's lost about a hundred since then. But he was walking four to six hundred a day. Steps. Last week he got um 
I'll give you the math on it. He got uh, over 42,000 last week. Whoa. And that's in, in 10 months. So yeah, in the beginning, it's not rocket science. I'm not, but right. uh, but again, like that dual adjustable pulley that you saw Frank on, his workouts are starting there. Like, you know, mm-hmm. well, why? Well, he can't do legs. Like suspension trainer squats. Oh, the staircase. Can we get up and down there? Oh, it took five minutes. Yeah. Yesterday, he ran up it in 10 seconds. Yeah. So wow. now you start doing these, I call them non-scale victories. You start quantifying success through things that we take for granted every day, but someone like that gets yeah. afraid. Like his, John told me the other day, and I could talk about this, one of his biggest goals in life is to walk into a restaurant and not be afraid to go sit at the dinner table mm, because yeah, he, wow. he knows that he can fit in the fit in the chair. Wow. We don't think about that. He no, you that. know, and, and wow. the, the satisfaction you get um, as a, I mean, for me personally, the most satisfaction I got was when I started training people in advanced age because of that yes. right there. Yes. So it wasn't like they're not breaking records and deadlifts and PRs. They're not losing 30 pounds, getting shredded. It's like, Oh my God, Sal, I, I could reach up into the top cabinet and grab a glass. And I wasn't able to do that before. Or I went up the stairs uh, by myself yesterday. My daughter didn't have to help me. It was a huge, like such a, a tremendous thing to hear as a trainer. So I'm right. sure you feel the same way when you. It's why we got into what we were doing, right? Like mm-hmm. We didn't get into this business to become multi-millionaires. Like hopefully some That's of us can do idea. that. <laughs> it's a terrible, it's a terrible idea. Fitness is the <laughs> worst place to get into <laughs> to become a football. I have family members that work in tech and finance. Oh yeah. And then I'm like, okay, yeah. you guys, <laughs> you guys are making money you and you guys, guys are not money, you know, yeah. crushing. So. But you no, know, we get into this because of a feeling and you guys know what I'm talking about when they leave that session and you know they're in a better place. When you when you do something that's life-changing that individual and to this day, you guys still get that. Yeah, that's you know, we do you said something that that's that we share in common uh, this this obsession with wanting to get great at your craft mm. and it doesn't matter how much you're getting paid they, like all you even shared i don't know how many years with you were like 12 15 years into your career and had that that huge hiccup and you still <sighs> put yourself out there give everything for free train like i mean the that mentality is is the reason why we were really successful is the reason why you're really, because and i was just i just had this call with like, I don't know, there's like 30, 40 trainers on there and I'm, and I'm coaching them and they, they get to ask me questions and stuff and they're all asking the wrong questions. I'm like, and I explained- What were to, they asking? I'm just- you know, been, how, how do, do you I charge? How, yeah, how yeah, much do I yeah, charge? Yeah, yeah. How do I do this? I'm just like, yeah. you know, how long have you been training people for? You know, oh, I'm in my third month. I'm like, go get your 10,000 hours. Yeah. So when you're, when you're gym boss- says, hey, do you want to work on Saturday and hold this webinar or you want to do this? You want to go out? Oh, we have this this corporate event. You want to go? And you're like, and if you ask questions like, well, how much are you going to get paid? Yeah, you have the it. wrong mindset. Yeah. It's like, hell yes, I'll do that. I mean, that was our attitude when we started this podcast. We knew nothing about media. We all knew we weren't going to be good at it. You know, we got 2,000 something episodes in and we're still only at 5,000 hours. We're still, I wouldn't even consider us good at this yet. So, and that was, oh, no, the, you guys are good at this. Well, well we, we, you know, we, and that, I was talking to a group yeah. of people that I said, you guys don't, rem-, you, I said, you don't, everyone in this room right now knows who I am, but you only know me in the last three to five years when, when we were getting better, but we, you know, you didn't know me when we were terrible and we were getting our reps in like, yeah. and that's what made us here. So that's where you should be people focused. People do not understand the power of relationships. I've been on a dozen covers. Mm-hmm. The first time I was on the cover of muscle and fitness had nothing to do with my body. It didn't because there are a billion people out there Mm. that probably look way better than I do with their shirt off. I can accept that. No Mm. problem. I'm fine where I'm at. But I remember reaching out to editors, becoming friends with them, bringing them in. All I was focusing on was their training. They went to pay me. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I got to do something for you. No, you don't. Don't worry about it. I just, I liked hanging out with the people. They were good people. We had good conversations. One of my good friends, Sean Perrine, who who passed away a few years ago. He, the first cover of Muscle and Fitness I got on was the last cover he chose oh, wow. before he passed away. We had, I had a meeting with him. He thought he had pneumonia in October. He was dead of cancer in December. Mm. Wow. And it was the last cover that he chose. And that cover was not because I won, you know, classic physique, no, right? That cover was because I, they wanted to see me win. Yeah. And they wanted to see me win because I went in there with a good approach and I just wanted to help people. That has been my business plan, seriously. And that's yeah. what most people are forgetting out there. They want, what's my session rate? Because the session rate doesn't matter. Yeah. I can go through my session rates. People would be like, holy shit. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter. You charge $100, you raise your rate to $125, that'll wear off in about a year. Yeah. You won't feel significant anymore. You're not going to be happy about that. There's, you know, with me, it needed to be more. And for you, it needed, you were making, you, you, yeah. you, you were crushing it. Yeah. Right? You were talking about it. You weren't feeling fulfilled. Yeah. So we got to start asking ourselves, what are we doing this for? Otherwise, you're going to be one of those coaches yeah. that's sitting here at 56 years old, continuing to do the same shit. You know what, Don? I got to add to that, though, yeah. because someone's going to hear you and they're going to hear, okay, so if I want to get 
more from people. I got to go and just give them free stuff. It's gotta be but un- it is, unconditional. it's got to be genuine. Though. Unconditional. Got to be genuine. That's though. right. Because you're not going into it thinking no. this guy's going to give me. Yeah. I'm know. looking back on this now going, wow. That's I, I, right. So my buddy, John, who's I just told you a hundred pounds. I'm not charging John. Why am I doing this? John can't give me anything. Mm. Laura can't give me anything but satisfaction. They, the only thing they can give me is fulfillment for me doing that. And you know what? If something good happens of it, fine. That's now, not why you're I'm You're sharpening your sword. The way I said it in the, the meeting was I said, listen, I, I go with that same attitude with relationship building. I recognize I'm going to give the shirt off my back to 10 people and nine of them aren't going to do shit. That's just how it is. That's how it happens. And you, and you got you to expect that and not care because you're not doing it to get something in return. But- one out of those 10 people, you fundamentally change their life and they become your cheerleader for the rest. You just stole my line because I was going to say my batting average the probably lifer. is terrible. <laughs> it's prob- probably batting under 100 with the amount of free stuff I've given. And But I'm fine. I'm fine with, you know, the nine out of 10 people turning. If you're not fine with it, then you're, then you're doing it for the wrong reasons. Because yeah. if you're going to sit there and you're going to be bitter that someone did not, just do it because you think that it's worth investing but, but into. But let me add to that too, because uh, that passion that you have, which I, I, I could, it resonates, right? That passion that you have mm-hmm. is what drove you for those four years after 2008 when you went from crushing it to nothing. Yeah. And someone may be thinking, how the hell did you last Four years. And by the way, if you hadn't done those four years, you wouldn't be where you're at right now. No. Or now you're killing it. You're crushing it you're all over the place. What drove you was this belief and this passion and what right. you did. Right. So that's the value. The value is it's going to get you through those tough things. Right. And it's going to bring, and it's going to bring you that, that, uh, that, that meaning into what right. you do. Otherwise it's worthless. Right. I also had a lot of help. Mm. Right. And that's something I think a lot of us are afraid to admit. Like, I'm, guys, I'm not self-made. Like I'm, I'm like I hear people yeah. talk about self-made. I don't even know what that means. Like I, I, I don't because every person I've ever spoken to, Calvin Klein, you know, I can go through some of the biggest names that that we know globally. They've had some sort of help. They've had someone believe in them. They had someone give them an opportunity. Maybe it was an uncle that lent them fifty grand to get something started. Maybe it was something. Mm-hmm. I've gotten a lot of help. When I was in that trouble, the fact that a group of people turned around and gave me a million dollars, yeah, they knew the risk. They didn't do that because they didn't like me. Mm-hmm. So I got a lot of help. So along the way, it's it, it's okay if you're, I, I've had coaches that have actually burned bridges with me because they've wanted to prove they can do it on their own. Because when they left drive, oh, I can do this. F him. I don't, I don't need him. <laughs> I don't know. And you know what? <laughs> Fine. Then I turned around and some of the biggest names in Hollywood, I didn't hand to them. And then they came up to me years later and they were like, I'm sorry. Yeah. Like, dude, it's fine. Don't worry mm-hmm. about it. Like, we're all we're all doing our best here, man. Like, it's yeah. it's it's like mm-hmm. I made a ton of bad mistakes. You know, I'm sure you everyone did in this room. It is what it is. Yeah, but the yeah. power. The I mean, I you know that's a thing we you and I have definitely in common. Yeah. Is I value relationships so much, and so much of the success of this business that nobody knows about behind the scenes is built off of all the relationships that we yeah. have. And what's beautiful about learning this early when you're young is it compounds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So even though you're batting 10, you yeah. know, one out of 10 yeah. and, you, and nine people don't do shit for you, that's a lot of work for not very much return. Right. But that one person becomes a, a lifelong cheerleader for you. And then, you know, you go through another 10 and you get one more of those and then you get one more of those. And then 10 years goes by and you got a hundred of those people that are rooting for you and truly yeah. want to see you successful. And they don't just do it once, they do it forever because of how much you fundamentally changed their life life or what you've done for them without expecting anything in return. And then one day you wake up and you're 40 something years old and you got a lot of people that, you know, w- would take care you, of hopefully. you. Yeah. Hopefully. And hopefully it goes, listen, we all hope it all goes, keeps going in a good direction. But again, listening to that line, you're all expendable. That left something in my head. It really kind of messed me up a little bit. I'm like, this might like, it's great now. Where is it in a year? And I think that's also what enables you guys to stay hungry. Like you guys have probably one of the best podcasts in the world, right? I mean, mm-hmm. you guys built that. You guys should be proud about that, but I'm sure it's in the back of your head. All right, how do we keep building and developing this and moving forward and evolving? You want to evolve. Yeah, so absolutely. so Don, yeah. Don, share with me, uh, yeah. like, uh, what do the revenue streams look like for you sure. uh, as far as like, uh, are, do you do reoccurring? Yep. Do you do, okay, so tell me how, what, what I got, what, and what I'm, what I'm, what I do is not what I recommend most people to do because a few things fell on my lap years ago. So I have an app. Um, I'm partners in a company called Playbook and uh, we've, um, Jeff Crahell is the CEO. It's been an app. It's been around eight or nine years. I was 
brought on as the chief science officer years ago. It's a fancy name. I like throwing it around. <laughs> uh, but you know, that's your that's your Netflix model, monthly subscription. Um, and it's a clean app. We load about 10 workouts on a year. We got some engagement on that. The tech's amazing. Not my biggest revenue stream. My challenges is what I started during COVID. My challenge community is going to be close to 10,000 people in April. I put a lot of my heart and soul in there because I can coach. So every morning they get access to my... Um, um, a morning Facebook video where I answer all their questions. They get their workout. They get their nutrition. And is that live with you or pre-recorded? It's pre it's pre-recorded, but I'm answering their questions daily. So if I have 200 questions come in, I'm answering 200 questions that next morning. Got it. I put a like this morning. I was it wasn't 200 questions this morning. Thank God. But I was able to get a lot of that done. So that's two. Three. I sell pro programs globally, like you guys do. Um, four. I'm partners in about a dozen brands um, that I help with uh, strategy. And are you an investor too? In those? Yeah, so oh, cool. I could be I, I could be an investor whether it's sweat equity or my own money. It depends on the deal. Yeah. Um, I also uh, a lot of public speaking. Um, we have our online courses that my wife, who handles a lot of the back end. Your wife's the one woman we were uh, communicating with, probably. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so my wife Mel is uh, the one who handles a lot of the back end stuff, the computer stuff. We have a team at home like you guys have here. Oh, cool, cool. Kind of doing all that stuff, and we have the barn. So I built the barn. Um, two years ago, yeah. which you guys have to come out to, by the way. Yeah, we got to make it. Next time you guys awesome. in New York, I'll have food, cold plunges set up, sauna set up, six session. It'll, it'll be awesome. Yeah, I would, I would love yeah, to do dumb. that. It, it, are they, um, are, are those, are they pretty evenly distributed or is it like one or two of those is the bulk of the business? Like how I'd say the program, uh, well, I, I think Challenges. probably the weakest, the weakest out of them are probably the subscription. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, that's why we didn't go subscription, by the way. I'm going to, but you know, it, it, it draws money for us. It does yeah. well for us. For some reason, people don't like committing to that number. Now I know yeah. Playbook does great and he's got a great formula and it's brilliant tech. You need a it, ton of volume. You know, I like you sharing this though, because this is actually a belief for a lot of people. A lot of trainers think that this is the model is that you build up a little bit of a network and then you go, you transition right into this subscription model because of the Netflixes and all these success stories. Yeah, but that's Netflix, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And that's yeah. what I try to explain to them. It's like, yeah. you're not Netflix. You're a good trainer and a good coach yeah. who's helping out. A, Engage. You know, yeah. Engage. I mean, again, we're getting back to that yeah. word. Like, why am I putting a video up every morning? Because, and I'm answering a lot of the same questions or, you know, I'll bring on Dr. Gabrielle line once a month or Dr. Dwayne Jackson, or I'll bring on a, a sex therapist or a breathing coach or someone to talk about mattress quality. Mm -hmm. Like I'm just finding, so I, I, I do that. I try and engage. I try and add value. I'm hosting uh, my third annual Don con. I did not think of the name. <laughs> <laughs> Comic Con, get it? It's just a natural fit. It's a natural fit. Yeah. Um, we we rented an island off of Puerto Vallarta last year. We had seventy people from over fifteen countries show up. Oh, and this year, retreat. We, fitness retreat. We'll have cool. one hundred and fifty people from over twenty five countries in two weeks this summer. Already committed. So I imagine that script seems to be uh, fun. a fun, fun a fun thing for you more fun. than it is probably a major revenue maker. It, it, it does well. Oh, does it? Okay. It, sur sur surprisingly, for two weeks, it's like it does well, but. Um, um, it's it's fun to get everyone in there. And what I found out is that, you know, people come from all over the world and they're, you know, they may not have the greatest life at home or they may not have the most ideal situation at work. You get everyone in a room together. Everyone's got the same problems. Everyone's laughing, crying, doing their their things. And, we're, and we train together. It's all body weight stuff for two weeks. Mm -hmm. I'll be taking a boat to Puerto Vallarta to like try and get a couple lifting sessions and maybe maybe because <laughs> I'll just be chawing on my fingernails. But um, <laughs> You know, it, 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 that to me was something that sprung up. I got I to gotta pat my wife on the back for that because we committed to Costa Rica three years ago, 35 people. I'm like, 35 people are not going to come to this rented place. We sold that in two hours. Shocked, wow. blown away. So we went to Costa Rica. It was great. The following year, she's like, well, we got the opportunity to do 70 now, but we got to rent this island with six figures to reserve it. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, holy shit. I'm like, fuck it, let's just do it. You know, but again, like- Risk or stupidity. It's uh, like that'd be fun to do together. That'd uh, be a that would, that would be, be a, uh, I'd be totally that would be I'd totally game. Tell us a little something. bit about the barn. How does yeah. that work and how does that bring in revenue mm -hmm. and what's oh, that? Man. Like? Yeah. So that's where I shoot all my content. So I don't train any people out of there. Once in a while I'll have like a, a big name come in and we'll do kind of an overhaul on them. But it's a two thousand square foot multi floor. I don't know if you have any pictures up there. Oh, some guys are standing in front of it. I gotta get good pictures from inside. Oh, that's it with with the snow up there. Okay. But I literally built this house in my backyard. I love Life the Life Fitness this and looks. Hammer Strength cool. came in. I mean, we got dumbbells up to 150s. We got kettlebells up to 48 kilos. We have a full 
cardio, curve treadmills, motor treadmills, step mill, everything. Downstairs, full line of hammer strength, power rack, leg press, hack squats coming in, extension curls, shoulder press, everything. Um, I mean, dude, we have preacher benches down there. It doesn't yeah. matter. I've got, oh wait, this is it. This is that, it, that's yeah, going yeah, through this right is there. A tour. I mean, this thing is sick. I've actually seen sick. this already. Jim Cribs. So tell me how, okay, how much total invested in this thing? Because I would love- Or did they give you all the equipment to get- Featured, yeah. See, there's the wink. That's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. So we uh, see. I just kind of jumped off. I'm like, oh yeah. So no, life fitness has been a great part. We actually have a couch there right now. It's it's changed. It's changed a bit. It looks a little bare. But um, so yeah. So I think to build out the faci- uh, to build out the structure, I think it cost me like a half a million bucks. Okay. okay. And I got about three hundred grand in equipment. Probably a little bit okay, more. Okay. So than, yeah. So I would have figured yeah. about a million dollars. Yeah. What I would have guessed. Like, and the I, idea is for media. Yeah, it's for media yeah. and for me yeah. and and for me like. Honestly, what we so what soft. we what we that's, love it for is crazy. like if you three were to come in, like it's red carpet, man. Like I have a huge ego with this stuff. Like catered breakfast, uh, you guys are coming in training. What music do you want to listen to? Cold plunges, bro, we're sauna, now three for four sure. hours. <laughs> no, no, no my honestly, soul right now. I'll send a car for you guys. I don't even care. Yeah, but it's one cool. of those things where I like people that I love being around, having great experiences, and just establishing. This is good a, by the way. This is like it, so every trainer, fitness person's dream is yeah, to get successful totally enough yeah. that you could afford to, to own their own right, gym. To drop a million but dollars like, on I'm your looking gym. looking at the gym. medicine ball. See how they're out of line? That pisses me off. <laughs> 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 that curve treadmill's gone. Hammer Strength has a step mill in there now. There's so much more equipment in so, there. So okay, did you design this yourself or did you have someone design it for My you? wife did the wow. uh, Reclaim Wood and she did the beans. It's beautiful. She it's really, beautiful. The, really the, nice the, the equipment, Lisa Wild at Life Fitness and Hammer. That that curve treadmill's gone now. Uh, oh, that, there's a step mill. And um, yeah, man, it's uh, we've got that new air, that new HD air bike. That air bike's gone now from Schwinn. Uh, Hammer Strength got me a whole bunch of these. They've been a great, they've been a great partner. How uh, did your personal relationship with fitness develop, just for yourself? Wow, um, you get me teary eyed right now. I think, we, I think we have a lot of we we have a lot of similar things in in here. Yeah, I think that's it's, why I'm asking. It too. started with some heavy insecurities. I had a terrible mm-hmm. stutter problem. I had a terrible hearing problem in like the second grade. Mm-hmm. Even now, like you'll hear like the stutter go on me a little bit. I embrace it. I actually love it. Um, <laughs> but I think second grade, I remember coming home and I was having a tough time. They put us into a um, special ed class mm. with like five of us. What are they thinking? Like yeah, they yeah. put five kids into a class every day at lunch. They have the same five kids rolling out while all the classes are coming out oh, at the right. same time. You can imagine what, what right. we had to go through. Right. So uh, my father was a big baseball player, you know, in high school and growing up, started having catch at me and I became in love with baseball. It was just my thing. And it was our, it was our way to connect because he was in the catering business working 40 hour weekends, you know, weddings, bar mitzvahs. You know, I was, I was working in kosher kitchens at you know, 10, 11 years old. Like I just understood that whole entertainment. And, but I also understood that my father wasn't around for games on weekends. So then I started playing a lot of ball with my dad, got into a little league team and then started going to the school. We started having pickup games. And I remember coming home and being like, mom, like better than everyone. Like it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm good at something. <laughs> and she's like, Donnie, you're going to be good at a lot of things. And I think that's when the drive to become. So that was what allowed me confidence so that I felt like I didn't have it in school at the time. I felt like my, whatever, they were, if there was a disability or not, I have, no, I have no idea, but my hearing problem, my stutter, all these things that were, you know, working against me, I, I started using baseball as my, you know, thing. So um, I went off to play college baseball. I played division one baseball. I had a great four years. I was a two-year captain at my university. I loved it. But when I was at school, I was training. It became like the major I was majoring in business, but I was, I, I remember one time we had a game in Albany where we had like a four hour ride. And I remember going through a full squat session before the game, getting out of the van and like literally like dragging my feet to home plate. I'm like hitting third. My coach is looking at me like shaking his head. He obviously the only guy that didn't have to work out with the team because he just knew I was nuts. So when I had a bunch of tryouts afterwards, Mets, Mariners, I got picked up to play over at some team in Italy and I already had my job in the city. And I was like, at that time, I didn't want to go. So I didn't go. I like my my love turned into fitness. Mm. It was the only thing in my life I felt like I had complete control over. Mm. I don't care how much I hit or how good of a player I was. I saw Griffey strike out three or four times in a game. I just felt like you couldn't get that return off of anything that I could do with my fitness. Mm. So I felt like, well, the better I ate, the more I, the better I slept, the, the the smarter I trained, the outcome became better. Wow, like this is this is special. This is kind of cool. And now I was like, well, how do I? do this for work. I didn't know about trainers in 99 when I graduated. Mm. I'm thinking about becoming like an FBI agent <laughs> or a cop because I'm thinking, well, they have to train. <laughs> My mom looks at me and she's like, well, 
they have these trainers. And I'm like, they do, but they don't make money. She's like, don't worry about the money. I told you this when you were younger, you'll be good at anything that you do. So I literally like that day, I drove into the city and I drove all over the city, New York Sport Club, Crunch, this place Equinox opened up, this place La Palestra, Pat Menachia, very smart, very smart um, uh, fitness guy, uh, hired me and I decided to go with Equinox. And um, that's kind of where my path started. And mm -hmm. at that point, it was just this whole thing. But it all, uh, this all like derived from my insecurities and, and the things I went through. I saw Michael Hearn on a cover when I was, you know, 13, 14 years old. And I was like, that guy looks awesome. And then I'm training at Bev Francis Powerhouse and I'm looking at this guy, 300 pounds, who just, just moved well. He was big, but he just moved well, Frank Seppi. Mike and Frank, I'm like good friends with. I train with them both now. So it's funny to see some of your like your longtime idols turn into friends. I was just on totally. on Mike's podcast. I, I grew up reading about it's a lunatic him and the bodybuilding <laughs> magazines. And then I'm sitting in front of him. He's interviewing me. I'm like, this is weird, man. I told him this I, is cool. I, I used to read your articles and shit and try yeah. to train like you. It's really no, weird, Mike's man. Mike's a lunatic, but yeah. Mike's also a freak. I mean, look at the guy. Oh, it doesn't make it. That doesn't yeah. make, don't so even strong. makes no sense whatsoever. Yeah. Especially when you hear what he did when he was like 16, 17, his lifts. Like, okay, mm -hmm. this guy was he's a mutant. Doesn't make He came out, worked out with me. I drive one day and he was like, I'm off this week. I'm like, um, you're, you're off. Like what the fuck is like, I'm just, I'm taking, I'm like, when, when we're all taking time off, I was like, you commit to it and you're in. Yeah. Like, what do you mean you're off? He's like, all right, man, maybe I'll do arms with you. I'm like, all right, cool. Let's do arms. He, he unracked 315 on a close grip reverse grip. <laughs> started running sets of like 15. This is, this is his off day arms. We're <laughs> I got 225 on it. I'm like dying. And he's sitting there with 315 for sets of 15. Yeah. He's, he, he's, so he's going to come up. He's going to try and come up here sometime in April. He's like, we'll get a workout. I'm like, no, bro. my ego can't handle he's it. He's evolving a lot now. He's not, I, his stuff's, you know, Mike, I love you, but he, Mike's full of shit. Like I know things are evolving now and yeah. he's starting to do some different things. I see some of the movements he's doing and. Yeah. I met his wife. She's amazing. Too. Oh, Mona, she, Mona, uh, Mona's great. Mona's stronger than him. Oh, uh, she'll kick my ass. I told <laughs> oh, him, he's like, you can work out with Mona. I said, she'll kick my ass. Yeah, I don't want to work out. I'll work out with Mike. I'm not working out with Mona. Mona's <laughs> oh, a psycho. That's, That's hilarious. Good stuff. That's a good deal. Yeah, fitness is uh, is a great vehicle for personal growth. You know? Yeah. Because if you had you stayed insecure through it, would have never worked. Right. You had to kind of work through that. Through fit. I talk about this all the time. When I used to train kids, you know, 14, 15 years old, because their parents would bring them to me. Um, I remember it used to blow me away because I'd train them with exercise and then they do better with the schoolwork. They'd, they'd start making friends. They'd start becoming more confident. And it wasn't because their bodies were changing. It was because of what you just said. Like, and I used to point it out to them. Like you did five pushups last week. Today you did six. You know what that means? Said, That's no. awesome. I'd yeah. say you're a different you're person. You'd see the lights go off and, in their head, and they'd be like, I am a different person. And That's I a great line, by the hard. way. I've never heard yeah. anyone use that. Oh yeah. I used to tell the yeah. kids that and it would like blow that. them away. And, uh, like you that. know, and so, Fitness is just a great vehicle for for growth. I know Arnold Schwarzenegger talks about how that led to his success in business, but it's the same principles. It's exactly the same business. It, it's, it's it's ironic sometimes when you look at someone who's so successful in business and how they got there, and they can't do it in it's the same in health. Yeah. Exactly. It's like, well, did you just? I'm sure Mike Bloomberg didn't wake up one day and was like, "Oh, I'm going to start a business. I'm going to start Bloomberg." Yeah. And you know what? We'll just see what we have today. Like he had a plan. Yeah. He surrounded himself with a team. And in the beginning, and I wanted to say this earlier, but um, the most people don't know. It's not their job to know. They're, they're looking at influencers out there and they're like, well, that guy's got a grab woman's got a great body. It's not their job to know, right? And, and I think that's why a lot of people are misled. And that's why it's it's important for me to see guys like you doing what you're doing. I don't mean to sound like an old man here, but mm. like, <laughs> you know, you guys are leading by, yeah, but you are, right? because there is a lot of crap out there. So I think the now time. now in the industry, when, when I talk with people like Shallow or Gabrielle or people who are really good at what they do and they take pride in what they do, when you hear them talk about individuals, it's the same thing. Like, oh, greatest people, mom pump guys, Don, they're the best. Like you gotta hook up with them. And it's because we wanna now see that message be portrayed more yeah. because mm -hmm. we want that example to to, to, to overflow. I mean, I think, I think all of us, yeah old guys uh we're you know slow to the party but i think we're we're starting to arrive like i yeah. think the the young generation adopted the social media platforms first and early mm -hmm. and there was a lot of early success if you got in early for the way you look but and the, a lot of us fuddy old fuddy duddies are trying to figure out how to do all this stuff you know like how do <laughs> how do we communicate to all these people all over the world and, and now that we're kind of figuring that out we knew we know that the the message I think that we're all presenting um, is a better message because it comes from a better place. I think that- But it's your message. Yeah. You're not like trying to create something that's fake, yeah. right? Yeah. And that's why like you guys are coaches. Yeah. You guys have great coaches. This is what you've always done. Like just tell your story. And I think yeah. that's why you guys are successful because it's, it's actually, I'm not saying it's easy, 
but it kind of is like you guys are on here. It's like, all right, this is what we do. Well, you know, what makes it yeah. easy is, is checking the box on the stuff that you talked about earlier first is, is putting in all the hours of yeah. the practice and yeah. sharpening your sword. Cause a lot of the success of the show is sharing all the shit we did wrong, yeah. you know, is opening yep. up and being vulnerable yep. and being like, yep. I thought this was a good idea. I yep. thought this was a way to train. So when I, th and we share all that and yep. together we learn. And I think that none of that happens uh, it, with three months of figuring out how to hack an algorithm or no. posting awesome. It's like, you got to go, you got to go put those hours in. you got to go work. You got to go fall on your face before you get that. It's you know? fun to sit around people that want to see you win, right? Like there's, I've had plenty of questions about things in the industry where I'm like, well, digital app, Dennis Heenan, Kelsey's, uh, Kel I don't know if you guys have heard of the daily Kelsey. Mm. She'd be a great guest for you. Uh, she's dealt with some eating disorders and she's built an incredible, um, online business, but her husband, Dennis is like a marketing. He's like a, he's a, he's a genius. He basically was the one who taught my wife everything she's doing now. Mm. And now we're trying to add as much value to their life as possible. Cause they've done this. We're hosting a course, a course together this Saturday mm. with Luca Hosever and we're, we're going in and we're going to have fun. Are we making a lot of money? I don't even know what we're making off of it. <laughs> I don't care. Like we're going in there to educate. We got 20 coaches coming in. We're going to try and give them all the nuts and bolts, things that we wish we were taught 15, 20 years ago. I wish I had a podcast like this to listen to 15, oh, 20 yeah. years ago. Oh, yeah. I was, you know, what I was listening to, I was listening to Paul check. Yeah. Talk about organic yeah. farming. Yeah. I was listening to Poliquin. Um, I was reading stuff on Arthur Jones. I was, you, Those you know, were the from best the back yes. yeah. yeah. So I was, you know what? Yes. I was reading T Nation 15, 20 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Every morning I could not get past breakfast without sitting there eating my oatmeal, you know, reading yeah. T Nation. And you sit there and like, you want, you know, that type of information. Now, the fact that young kids have access to this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. I know. Yeah. 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 I, 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 uh, unfortunately it was all mixed in too, for me. I, cause I would read those guys too, but then it was mixed in with like muscle and fitness, flex magazine. <laughs> yeah. Iron man. And all that I stuff. still did that stuff. Yeah, yeah, don't get twisted here, man. <laughs> so and I did a lot of the wrong shit and I probably took every supplement. I'm sure I've spent. No, but I don't those. know if it was wrong, but I mean, you, you can also say that you did certain, like I've done some crazy training, yeah, like yeah. volume stuff. That's, that's nuts. I would never have anyone do today. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm glad I did it. Yeah, you learned. Don, Don you share learned. share yeah. with me your your journey with money. Uh, hmm. You've uh, you obviously have had tremendous success. You've also been at struggling, you know, to get yeah. by. You, you and listen to you talk and communicate uh, your passion for health and fitness and yeah. the way you are that you don't that you don't do a thing because oh this is going to return me X amount of dollars. Right? How did you get there? What was what is the evolution of your relationship with money look like? I really think it came down to my grandfather. I I, I started with him. I mean, I used to roll my eyes to things. When I was 12 years old, he'd be talking to me about, you know, in the restaurant business, you know, he was an Italian who lived in the attic of the catering hall that, that he started because his mother sold the house for them that $5,000 to start this restaurant with him and his brothers. And, you know, that whole story, they're all living in an attic together. Yeah. And, you know, they, they, they all, even to the day he died, my grandfather was the fastest eater. I ever. Like, Grandpa, slow down. Chew your Holy food. shit. That's yeah, why I know. my grandfather just passed away. Same he, thing. Guy, he he didn't say that. that. Three, oh no, three, three, three bites. And he would eat a whole bowl, of really like, piping hot pasta. Hot pasta I, right? I thought his yeah. mouth was made out of his best stuff. What was his reason? What was, <laughs> well, so. Yeah. So, so share, the, share what he tells us. I'm going to give you his reason. Well, it's going to be weird if time. it's the same. I don't know if it's the same, but my grandfather, the reason why he ate like that, he grew up very poor. So he grew up poor in Sicily. And whoever finished first got seconds. He had to eat it yep. fast because it. if he didn't, he didn't get no food. Dude, I can hug you right now. Wow. That's the no, same honestly, thing, huh? same, same story. Wow. Same exact story. So he'd be sitting there like, like the, like the beast from beauty and the beast. Like I remember, grandpa slow down. He's like, it's my whole life, man. He's like, I have two, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. he goes, he goes, I have two yeah. brothers. We were all around the same age. We only had food. Whoever finished first can get seconds. That was it. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, my uh, Saint, my grandfather, that's and he a, could not. That's he hilarious. did not know how to eat slow no. after that. So that's keep crazy. going. So he's so he's obviously made a huge influence. He would tell on... me all this stuff, and I would I would look. Did you like, think he was making shit up half the time? No, but it's like you're a young kid, like Don. You know, who's the wealthiest man in the world? I go, who? He goes, the man who finds peace of mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm sitting there like, <laughs> 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 yeah. okay, no, no. Is that on a poster yeah. somewhere? Then yeah. when I'm like bleeding money back in 08, I'm thinking, God, God, please, I just want but peace of mind. Just give me some peace of mind. <laughs> means financial success, health, my gym's yep. good, please, yep. peace of mind. Um, I, I, I think he instilled these things in me that did not click till later on. If you were to drop a billion dollars on my lap right now, I probably wouldn't go buy a Ferrari. I, I wouldn't be my, it's not my thing. Like yeah. I have a boat, it's arriving in a month, I'm psyched. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> I have some little, I have little things like yeah. that. I've got a, a beautiful home that we're renovating. I got my barn. Um, when we travel, we travel well. That's that's it. I'm so, good. do you remember moments though when when the old wisdom started to click for you? Because I have, you know, I'm yes. I'm, you you could have told me anything 
uh, that was full of wisdom around money when I was 16, 17. But because I, I came from very little, I had this, I had to go figure it out for myself. Right. So did you have a similar thing where like you were driven that way? When and, things went to shit. Yeah. I'm not yeah. going to lie. Yeah. Most people are in church when things go to shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it's, the, it's the truth. Like, I, listen, I, I, I try and go to mass every Sunday. It's, it's something that my mom instilled in me early on. I usher at my church, other story. I don't want to pat on the back for it. I'm not a goody two shoes, yeah. but these are, it makes me feel good. Yeah. But man, when things were tough, I was going every day. Yeah. Swear to God, man. Yeah. I was walking in every day. I was sitting in front of Mary and praying yeah. like, please get me through this yeah. every day coming home from the train. Cause I drove by the church. Wow. It was scared. I was scared shitless. Yeah. Mm. I was going to bed at night, scared shitless. My so, heart racing. And so it took that, that scares you shitless. Then you, you come up again and on the come up, are you, are you telling yourself, okay, when I'm coming up this time, I'm going to invest differently or I'm going to save differently? Are you thinking like that? Or maybe I'm going to take less huge risks. Like what's going through your no, head? No, what's going through my head now is I'm like, I'm going to be all right. Yeah. Oh, I see. I can, I can handle, I can survive. I'll yeah. survive anyway. I'm, I'm going to say, I'm not saying, oh, I'm going to put away this or blah, 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 college. No, I'm going to be all right, man. Yeah. Because you know, at the end of the day, we're all, we're all, every one of us in here, 50 years, man. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I don't mean to get depressing, yeah. but like we're not like Jobs didn't. Steve Jobs didn't get married with his uh, 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 buried with his uh, bank account on his tombstone. Right. It's like when it's over, it's over. Like let's go for it. Yeah. That's my thing. Like I'm gonna, I am going to take risk, but I'm also gonna put. I'm gonna also minimize the risk as much as possible. Like <laughs> if I believe in something and I'm like, okay, this is not putting my family in harm's way. I got a call to go heli skiing recently. I was like, all right, no, I'm going to Austria in a week. That's fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Be snowboarding in Austria for a week with a, with a buddy of mine. But there's certain things I just don't need to be doing right so, now. So Don, you're also a father. Yeah. How do you teach these? Because your, your kids are growing up, successful yep. dad, yep. Uh, you know, the, you know, privilege in that sense or whatever. How, do you, how are you instilling some of these things in, in your kids? They still think their dad's a trainer. Okay. So when people ask them what their father does, they're like, oh, he's a personal trainer. They think so their dad. Think he's broke. <laughs> Hold on, they haven't, they haven't had anybody show show up yet. Hey, this is your dad on the internet? No, no, no. I mean, Not yet? they they get it. I mean, yeah. they you know they they get it. Um, but they also understand this blue collar type mentality that I have. They understand that I'm on calls at a certain time. But you know what, man? Like, I just took my son to the University of Louisville. He's a baseball fanatic. We had a weekend together. My my daughter, you know, we're, we're prom dress shopping the other day. You know, where my family is my it's my number one. That's mm -hmm. it. But um, they also understand that their dad's not sitting, you know, no offense, behind a desk at a bank. You know, wearing a suit every day. They know that I'm in the service business. My my son the other day came in to do a session with me and Blake Lively. He sees me running around grabbing weights, doing the things that trainers do. Yeah, yeah. and um, I'm glad. I'm really happy about that. You know, and I try and teach them the value of the dollar. Um, and I also, with your kids, I believe you got to lead by example. So when a parent calls me, they're like, I can't get my kids to eat good. How yep. do you get You got to eat good. Yep. Yeah. It's fucking, what it, look what you're doing. Yeah. 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 Buddy might call me up the other day. He goes, my, my kids commented on my drinking. So, so what's that telling you? He goes, Donnie, I got to stop drinking. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, so, so, so dude, kids are smart, man. His 10 year old's telling them, Hey dad, you should probably get rid of the booze. So this goes down a little bit. So, so, <laughs> oh, yeah. For your 10 year old, he called me up all pissed off. You know, he's. Whatever, but yeah, yeah I, I think um, children. It's um, I think we got to lead by example. How your your parents must be pretty proud, huh? They are. They they both have COVID right now. I called them this right morning. now. Yeah. Oh, wow. they're in they're in um they're in Florida. Um, they doing know, all right. They're, they're doing well. They're they're seventy seven. You know, I think they're in the chapter in their life right now where they're really starting to think and uh, differently. And uh, you know, I love them to death. I haven't seen them in a couple of months because they're down south. But you know, we live really close to each other. They're probably three miles from my house. Mm. So I get to see them a lot. I try and stop in as much as possible. And, you know, I, I, I think I could look at my life so far and say I've been a pretty good big son. I probably scared the shit out of them a lot, but, you know, they are proud. Yeah. That's, That's good, awesome. man. Great story. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad we had you on the show, Don. Well, listen, man, I, this, I, is awesome. this, is, this is great. I mean, there's not, I flew in a day early to see you guys. Obviously, I think pretty highly of the three of you. So keep doing what you're doing. Keep leading by example. And Same, when you guys are in New York, it. man, please come, come we'll be come my guys. 100%. Yeah, we're yeah, we'll coming now. You, the whole gym talk, you, you spoke to my soul. Come so we're coming yeah, by. Yeah, yeah. We're on. <laughs> Thanks, Don. I got you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Today, we're going to teach you everything you need to know to build a strong, well-developed chest. When I think of you know, weak points and, and areas that I struggled with developing for a, a really long time, chest was up there with the- Yeah, it was for me. It was for me for sure. I got more caught up in the weight I could lift versus how I was developing my body. I think it's one of the most challenging muscles to develop for most people because the form and technique. 